Good morning, friends, and welcome to Tuesday, September 27th. James Montney will start us with Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Tuesday's devotions are found in the Upper Room Discipline, written by Wessel Bentley. And our scripture reading is Lamentations 1, 1 to 6. How lonely sits the city that once was full of people. How like a widow she was become, she that was great among the nations. She that was a princess among the provinces has become a vassal. She weeps bitterly in the night with tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she shall have no one to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile with suffering and hard servitude, and she lives now among the nations and finds no resting place. Her pursuers have all overtaken her in the midst of her distress. The roads to Zion mourn, for no one comes to the festivals. All her gates are desolate. Her priests groan and her young girls grieve and her lot is bitter. Her foes have become the masters. Her enemies prosper because the Lord has made her suffer for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children have gone away, captives before the foe. From the daughter, Zion has departed all her majesty. Her princes have become like stags that find no pasture and they fled without strength before the pursuer. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The author's therapist starts each session by asking the same question. Where do I find you? The first time he went to see her, the question annoyed him. If everything had been normal, he would have said, right here in your room, sitting on a couch. But not this time. The question cut deep. He couldn't be flippant. Words failed him. She unlocked his words by posing a series of further probes. Tell me what you're feeling. Tell me what you're thinking about. Tell me what you see. Read the text for today again. This time, imagine the writer sitting speechless on a couch in God's counseling room. God asks, where do I find you? And the writer starts by unpacking what he sees, his feelings, his fears, and his doubts. The author apportions blame, tries to find the answers for himself, and makes every effort to make sense of the chaotic situation. God does not interrupt. God does not argue with his assumptions, his accusations, or his logic. God listens patiently and emphatically, empathically allowing the writer to let go of the words that have been locked up deep inside. Healing does not come immediately, and it definitely does not come with concrete answers or by satisfying the difficult questions that we ask. It does not manifest in our eloquence or lack thereof. Healing starts when we know that we are received with empathy and compassion when we are heard, even when our words do not make sense, either to ourselves or to others. Yesterday's challenge of putting words on paper or paint on canvas or playing a musical instrument may have felt overwhelming. Where do I start? Start with one word or one stroke of the brush or one note. This is where the writer of our scripture started by humbly stating that he saw in front of him a lonely city on top of a hill. And then the rest followed. Let us pray. Lord, you ask me, where do I find you? We know that you ask us, ask one who knows the answer already. We pray for courage to utter at least one word, to paint one stroke, or play one note. Amen. Closing him is, It's Me, It's Me, O Lord, verse 2. It's me.
it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher, not the deacon, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher, not the deacon, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's 